Chapter 1, Section 3 Origins and History of Business Process Management Today we understand the importance of managing entire business processes, but that has not always been the case. If we look at prehistoric times, workers focused on the entire process of creating a particular product. From a perspective of capabilities, there were specialists. In industrial times, this picture had changed. Manufacturings were taking over and they were producing for a market. The workers in these manufacturings were assigned to very mediocrous little steps of the process. In this way, they became more and more specialists and responsible for smaller and smaller pieces of work. We have seen such an example in Adam Smith's discussion of the pin-making process. By the end of the 19th century, industrial work had become more and more fragmented. Why was that the case? Frederick Winsler Taylor explains the principles behind this what he called scientific management. The idea of scientific management was that each step that workers performed could be scientifically analyzed. In this way, a one best way for doing that work could be identified. A new type of employee emerged from this, these principles, managers. Managers were responsible for overseeing the productivity of groups of workers they were responsible for the analysis of the work and they were responsible for training the workers according to what was found. A consequence of this new way of organizing was that a hierarchy of different supervisor relationships was introduced in the company. So workers had to report to managers and managers were responsible for overseeing their productivity. And that principle step by step went up to the head of the company. This way of organizing is also called functional organization. And the functional organization with its hierarchical decomposition remained dominant until the end of the 1980s. Why did things change around the end of the 1980s? The reasons are associated with new innovations around information technology. Around that time, the personal computer was increasingly used. Windowing systems made it easy for end users to navigate such computers. Computer networks were increasingly used as well, and database technology became more mature. All these different technologies provided substantial opportunities for organizing processes differently, away from paper towards an IT-based coordination. These opportunities are described by Hammer and Champy as well as by Davenport in their books. Concepts like business process re-engineering and process innovation capture the essence of these ideas. Let us look at one of the examples that Hammer and Champy describe in their book. They refer to the purchasing process at Ford. The original process at Ford was as follows. When something had to be purchased, the purchasing department was contacted. They were the ones then issuing a purchasing order and that purchasing order went to a vendor. A paper copy of that purchasing order was also provided to the accounts payable department. The process would continue by the vendor sending the goods to the company that had ordered and then these goods and services were taken in through the warehouse department of the company. These would also take the shipping notice and forward it to the accounts payable department. 
In parallel, the vendor would send an invoice, which would actually be directed to the accounts payable department. So the job then of the accounts payable department was to check the invoice, to see if it is in line with the shipping notice, and to check if it is also in line with the original purchasing order. If that was fine, a payment was made to the vendor. While this process looks fine at a first glance, there were various problems. In essence, the accounts payable department had to make sure that three different documents were consistent with each other. In many cases, actually, there were problems of inconsistency. For example, let's say a vendor had shipped a little bit less than which was ordered because they did not have enough on stock. Then the shipping notice would not be in line with the purchasing order. Also, the invoice would not be in line with the purchasing order. What the accounts payable department then had to do was trying to settle by telephoning with the involved persons if it would still be okay that there is this deviation. So they would ask the original departments in the company if having less being shipped is okay and if they could actually still do the payment. If yes, they would change the purchasing order and the modified payment would be made. This process required something like 500 people checking all these different items in the different documents. Clearly quite an inefficient process given the fact that so many things can go wrong. Hammer and Champy described the results of a re-engineering project that redesigned the purchasing order process at Ford. The key idea was to introduce a purchasing database in which all purchasing orders were stored and to which all departments had access. The new process would work as follows. The purchasing department would issue a purchasing order and send it to the vendor. The vendor would then ship the goods with a shipping notice to the warehouse department that were taking in the goods. The warehouse would check if the purchasing order in the purchasing database was consistent with the shipping notice. If that would be the case, it would automatically trigger the payment. That means the accounts payable department now did not have to handle any errors anymore. Because only when the shipping notice was consistent with the purchasing order, the goods were taken in. The accounts payable department would then automatically initiate the payment to the vendor. So the vendor would not have to send any invoices anymore. This new process required only 120 people to handle all orders. All the different sources of errors were eliminated by introducing a central repository of information. This was a drastic success story emphasizing the importance and the power of business process re-engineering. The case of Ford and other cases reported by Hammer and Champy made business process re-engineering very popular. However, a larger share of BPR projects failed. Why was that the case? First, because the concept was misused. It was often that companies set up projects labeling them BPR. However, they were only interested in cost savings, not in redesigning the processes. Second, many projects were too radical. Hammer states in one of his papers, don't automate, obliterate. For many processes, this was too drastic. Third, the support was often immature. The necessary tools and technologies were not yet in place to support entire business processes. This means that people often got frustrated because the right infrastructure was not available. 
Eventually, around the year 2000, things were changing for the better. Now, people had understood that process orientation was actually very productive. The book by McCormick and Johnson nicely illustrates this. Furthermore, there were innovations on the IT side. Eventually, ERP systems had become so mature that they were able to support entire business processes from start to end. This was very important and very effective for supporting redesigned business processes. Around that time, it became also clear that it was not only about IT and the process. There was a need also for a new role that was overseeing the process. This new role is called process owner. The process owner is not working directly in the process, but he or she is responsible for supervising the process. This means on the one hand, a process owner is responsible for monitoring and controlling the process. Furthermore, the process owner is supposed to plan and organize the process. So if the performance is not right, the process owner is responsible for introducing measures and changing the process, such that the result of that is supposed to be a better process. 